Hi, this is David from over at SimplyMaya.com. Now, recently over on our forum, we've had the developer for Particle Flocker, which is a flocking system for Maya, so think flocks of birds, schools of fish, things like this, uh, post over on our forum about a new trial version of his plugin. Now, as this is something that interests me, I wanted to try it out for myself, as well as maybe bring some attention to it, see if it's any good. Now, the intro video on the website purports that this is very simple to use and you know lets artists have a lot of control over flocking behavior so this is really the first time I'll have used this and I just want to see if that's true how this works and um, I thought I'd record this to take you through it and maybe any thoughts I might have for the developer so I'm gonna start out in Maya here and really the install was very easy It comes with just a Windows executable you just click installs and it leaves this menu here in your Maya so I'm gonna pull open the particle flocker window and this will be pretty much the first time I've done this I wanted to record my initial thoughts on the process so create new particle flocker node and it comes with a PDF documentation with some you know uh, instructions in there to get you started so apparently this will act as a Maya field so pretty much the same as gravity Newton radial all your standard Maya fields so we're going to need some particles to interact with this particle flocker now I'm going to go up and just create a emitter so let's just pull this up I'm going to go for an omnidirectional emitter with a rate particle speed of 100 so I'm just going to create that and you'll see now that they're just going to fall straight downwards but because I'm using n particles we are of course affected by gravity so let's just turn that off and dynamic properties where have you gone there we go so I'm going to ignore solver gravity and ignore um, solver wind so this should just get us a bunch of particles that just pop out and in a omni direction okay so I'm going to give myself a few more frames to work with and as I say this is really the first time I've done this I did watch the um, the video on the developer site which all made it seem pretty simple so let's go into a top view and I'm going to want to do a path follow so I need a path for it to follow so if I just go in to here let's see modeling and let's get us some curves and just grab any old curve should do it and let's just give them a bit of a path to follow now what I'm gonna hope to achieve is to get my particles to come out and follow this path with flocking behavior so as a flock of birds might or a school of fish so I'll just edit the CV points on here to make our curve less flat just give us some points of interest there we go nothing too complicated start off with a nice easy test there so and just objects let's just pull that up in the air a bit all right so now I need to connect my particle flocker to my particle system so if we pull up this I'm gonna go n particle particle flocker with a control key and I'm just gonna go up to fields let's see fields and effects and use selected as source or assigned to selected is probably better in this case so let's see what we get so my particles come out and you'll notice that some of them appear to have some behavior on them and others don't this is due to a limitation in the trial version which is limited to 200 um, particles so depending on what you've got linked up to those particles you might have 200 birds 200 fish but anyway it's a limitation of the trial version so we're just gonna crimp this at 200 particles so let's go down and just find here um, the emission tab and let's crimp this to a max count of say 190 particles Okay, and they're coming out and they're definitely doing something but let's have a look in the particle flocker node and you'll notice they just have basic kind of flocking behavior on I see them come out and then sort of flock together um, but we don't have any way of telling them to follow this path and as I say this is really kind of the first time I've played with this so I'm coming at it from a completely new perspective but if I look under the window I've got targets so let's add the path as a target and see if they flock to the path they do 
All right, so the developer does say in the intro video that this is pretty easy to get started with working on, and I think he's absolutely correct. That was pretty simple. I can see my particles flocking around here. So also mentioned that this is going to work in real time. It's not pre-calculated, so I should literally be able to move this path, keep playing, and watch these reflock to it. So yeah, not a whole lot to say about that. That seems to just work, um, which is very nice to see. Okay, now obviously I've got some separation here, um, so I would imagine the, the separation value would separate these out. And it does. So if I crank that right down, they should be very close to each other. When they flock together, they are. Okay, and you can see their flocking behavior coming around. So that seemed pretty straightforward as a uh, following a path. Let's try something a bit different. Um, now, I want to remove this target, which I guess I could do by removing this path, but I don't actually want to do that. And I'm not really seeing a way here to remove the target. Um, Maybe I am just thicker than the village idiot. Let's remove the path, update UI, and the target is gone. But how do I do that if I don't want to remove the path? Let's take a look in the node editor. Okay, and let's graph this. And I can see the particle flocker node connected to the curve shape. And that's going to a target there, so I should just be able to break the connection here. Refresh this, and indeed that's a broken connection. Okay, and they're pumping out with some flocking behavior on. All right, so really I'm not sure if there is a, a delete button or an easier way to do that. Like I say, this is my first time with this. It seems to be pretty intuitive to break that connection, but uh, it might be nice if there was just a delete button in there. Oh, I say maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm um, a little slow because this is the first time I've fired this up. But anyway, let's try a different type of target. I want to try something with some keyframe animation. So let's just create a locator and add it as a target. And I'm going to create a simple keyframe. So just select it here, S and go a few frames forward, S and up and S and a few frames and you know I'm not doing anything complicated here okay the yellow warning you're seeing flashing up is just because they can't evaluate the particles over such a big jump but that's alright and yeah they seem to be following this as a target they're a little slow in comparison to my keyframe animation, but we've got a speed value here. So I would assume that cranking that up will make them go a bit faster. Now, probably a bit too fast in this case, but they do flock and follow along quite nicely. Let's get that a bit more, and let's get a bit more separation in them. Okay, that seems to work well. Um, so, so far, you know, this has been a fairly easy install um, on my first usage, and the interface has been quite intuitive. Um, I haven't really had any problems getting these to follow along to a path or follow a target here. Uh, maybe they're still too fast. And this is better. Okay, something else I saw on the intro video was simple avoidance of um, different geometry. So I'm going to put in a, say, let's say a polygon tower here. Let's get a big one. And let's get this to a point where it would bisect with the target that everything is following along. So let's get that around the middle here. So if we see the flock here, if I put this in the middle of the flock, maybe a bit smaller, and add this as a target, they should seek to actively avoid it. And let's see if that's true. Yes, they're avoiding it. 
Okay, they seem to be avoiding it at a maximum very big distance, but we do have a obstacle separation. So it seems like if I brought that down, and I can already see them. Yeah, so that's working in real time too. That's very nice. Um, if I push this up, you'll see they push out. So it does indeed do this in real time. Okay, and now my birds are flocking along and avoiding this target. So I actually like the system uh, overall. It was, as purported, to be very, very simple to use. You don't really need a lot of knowledge of dynamics to get good-looking flocks. I will assume that this target is animatable. Um, in fact, let's not make that assumption. Let's just animate it and see. So let's try this with a sphere. I just want to check this out quickly. And again, I've got this poly cube, which seems to be stuck in here as an obstacle even though I have removed it from the geometry and it seems to be a small thing but you know again it might just be me but I would like to see a delete button here um, but node editor and let's regraph this particle flocking node okay targets Ah, okay, this is actually me. Obstacles. Oh, we still seem to have it in there. Okay, I'm going to add the sphere. Ah, I've just worked out what happened there. All right, that's not um, a fault of the prob uh, program. I should have updated the UI, and I'm sure that would have disappeared. So again, it comes down to my ignorance of the system rather than the system itself. But let's get a keyframe on this sphere. And let's just move this sphere about a bit. Um, so let's go over here and set a keyframe and then bring it back, I don't know, around here. I'm just going to set some random keys and I'm going to set this as a target. It is. And let's see if they, sorry, as an obstacle and let's see if they avoid it. Yeah, I see them seeking to avoid that. Let's see if we can make that bigger in real time. Okay, and it has a key on it. Uh, whoops, there we go. So I'm going to have to just key that and I'll make it so it animates the size. And they all avoided it. Yeah, I see him flying around the bottom there. All right, so um, as you know, dynamic system work. This one seems to be very easy to use um, and I, I do like the flocking behavior there and the way they follow the target. I'm sure there's much more to learn about the system. I'm sure there's much more that you can do with it. But it's something you can just pick up and immediately create uh, some flocking behaviors with kind of no knowledge necessary on dynamics or um, yeah, it's really simple to use. I am fairly impressed and will probably use it in a project at some point. So thank you for watching. This was kind of my mini review first hands-on look at the Particle Flocker based system, which you can get here at particleflocker.techtoast.co.uk. So check out the free trial if you're of a mind to do some flocking behavior. Thanks for watching.